Welcome to Developer Diaries number 27. And today, Sean's actually going to cover re record locking in uh, Nitro App Builder apps. Um, I don't think I have anything else. You ready to just right. take over, Sean? Yeah, let me just uh, let me share my screen. You should be able to share. OK, can you see my screen? Yes. OK, let me log in here. All right, so I'm going to create a an application that just has a you know a simple you know we're going to use our favorite customer master file. Um, we're going to have a grid that um, you know I click and it opens up a form to edit the customer, and that's where I'm going to implement some record locking. So basically, what we want is you know if if, if I'm in that form. Um, I don't want another user to be able to open that form and, you know, possibly overwrite or, you know, two people editing at the same time. So let me create the application. Uh, I'm just going to use this customer listing here as the main driver. Uh, I'm going to put an app bar title, uh, DD27, uh, row locks, row locking. And let's add our, our form. I'm just going to put it here as a pop up. And let me just uh, adjust this height a little bit. Okay. All right. So when they click, when they click on the um, on any customer. That's where we, we basically what we want to do is we want to check and see, hey, is, is, is somebody using this uh, particular record? If not, let me uh, let me lock the record so nobody else can access it. So let me go into behaviors here and let's just focus on that that row click. And actually, you know what I want to do first? Let me I'm going to create an app variable. Um, and you'll see why I'm doing it this way later. I'm going to create an app variable called customer ID. So I'm just going to store the unique ID of the customer as they click it. So back to behaviors and on my row click, first thing I'm going to do is set app variables, that customer ID, click here. You know, we have access to the record and I'm going to set that to the customer number. Save that. Next. We're going to call an RPG program. So this is where we're going to do the locking. So I created an RPG program called DD27, and I have various actions. In this case, the action is going to be lock customer. Okay. So I'll save that. So we're going to look at the code, obviously, for this lock customer. Um, but if I can, in fact, lock the customer, if if this code runs and says, you know, hey, it's good to go. You can edit this record. It's going to send back a success true. So at that point is when I would want to do my filter widget of the customer form. You know, basically I'm 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 okay to edit here. So that's when we'll that's when we'll do the customer form. Like normally on the row click, we would do the filter right away, right? Because you know we're not checking for any any row locks or, or anything. So this process is going to run. Tell me if it's good to go or not. So let me save that. And let's just save the app and make sure that it's that it's working at least. Uh, actually, I also want to show file editor too. Just get this ready. And let's launch this application. Okay, so I'm going to click customer number one. And it brought up this, this form. So let's go to file editor and I'm going to open up. There's a file called BB locks. So we're just the, the way we're used, we're used doing the locks is we're we're using just a, a, an existing valence file called BB locks. And we have a couple of procedures um, that will write um, and remove records from this file. And that's what I'm going to show you in the RPG. But you can see I have this record here, demo CMAST. 
lock record, that's the, the key number one program, DD27, my session record, the user, the time I locked it, okay? So let's take a look at the code and see what's, um, what's going on there. Uh, I put it right in the balance library. Typically, you wouldn't want to do this. Okay, so this is, you know, probably many of you are already familiar. This is the, the button template program. You know, as usual, we do nothing in the main line. We start at process. So in process here, um, I've got all of these different actions I'm looking for. Um, you see BC, all, all these other ones, because we're going to show those later. I show you different ways to do it. Um, but we, we, we're, we're calling lock customer. So let's see what lock customer does. So all we're doing is we're pulling in the SID. So the SID is the unique session ID um, for every user. You know, every portal session has a unique SID. Um, and that's always available on every call. You could always get the SID if you want. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting the SID, uh, I'm creating a variable called program name, initializing it to DD27, and I'm calling this VV utility lock. I'm passing the name of the file, the unique key, and that's where I'm using my um, get app var customer ID, passing in the program name, and then passing in the SID. If it can if it can lock the record, this will send you know this will be true or false. Utility lock returns true or false. If it's good, I'm going to send back success true. Otherwise, I'm going to set a I'm going to send back success false, and we're going to pop up a message saying this customer is currently locked. Um, let me go. So let's just take a look at this VB utility lock. I'm going to go to the valence API docs. And under, let me just close these. So it's under Valence RPG Toolkit, there's you know all sorts of different um, modules that you have you know one to many procedures in. I'm going to go to VV Utility, and under Methods, you know, we have all sorts of different methods. I'm going to look up Lock. So I have to pass in the name of the file that I'm locking and then some sort of key, lock record. In my case, it's just the customer number. Um, you know, if I had a file, let's say that had multiple keys, you know, I might just string them all together and make that as the lock record key. Program name required and SID required. Um, so that, 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 those are the minimum requirements to use it. Um, these I can send because I want to get information returned back. Um, if, if I um, if if it is locked, it'll populate this file and tell me it's locked by this user, locked at this time, and we're going to use that later. But for now, all we need is just just really the first the first four, just to get that lock record. Okay. So let me go back here. So we know we've got the record lock, okay? So now I need to now I need to deal with releasing the lock, right? So there's multiple, you know, if, if I if I do this, the lock is released, or it should be released, but I, I, I gotta put that in. And just to show that, let me go, and I'm gonna go to another session here. And let's try and access that record. And I'm getting that this customer is currently locked. Okay. So that's good that I'm getting the lock record because there is a lock, but it's not good because I'm not releasing the lock. So let me just go into the file and let me just remove this lock. And let's go back into App Builder and let's 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 put in some stuff to release the lock. So I'm going to go back into behaviors and, and basically when they close this, when they close the customer form, I want to release the lock. So I'm going to call RPG program DD27. And I think we had an unlock customer. Let me just make sure that was the name of it. Yep. 
Yeah, unlock customer. And you can see unlock customer is doing the same thing, except it's calling unlock. Okay. So let's just save this. And let me save again. And let's just verify that this works. So I'm going to go back and let me refresh this. So I'm going to, if I go back to file editor, I should have no locks. Okay. And if I run it, I'm going to lock this record again. I'm going to go to file editor. Okay, there's our lock. And now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to close this. So when I close this, it should be calling that DD27 with the action of unlock customer. So let's see. I'd expect this lock to be gone. And it is now. Okay. So now let's um let's put in the save. So I'm going to attach a save button to this customer form. Save. And on save. I'm going to call the same DD27 save customer. Okay. Um, if the customer saves successfully, I'm going to do a hide show widget here. I'm just going to, I just want to refresh the data on my customer listing. Save that. Okay. So let's take a look at save customer. So save customer. Um, we are just, you know, populating our fields, updating the uh, customer record, and then I'm calling unlock customer. Okay, and then unlock customer runs again, the same thing. This is the same thing that runs when we call the action of unlock customer. So we're going to unlock the record and then send back true. Okay, so let's just see how that all works. Let's make sure it works. Oh, did I save? I don't know if I saved my app. I did. Okay, let me reload this. Go back here. So if I go to file editor, I should see that lock. Okay. And I'm going to save. And that lock should be gone. Okay. So lock the customer. Let me attempt to get in. Customer's locked. Okay. Let me close this one. The lock's been released. Let me try again on the other session. Now I can get in. Okay. So let's change this up a little bit. And instead of lock customer, that action of lock customer, I'm going to call lock customer B. It's just another uh, version of lock customer. So I'm going to change this to lock customer B. Save that, save and save. And reload this. Let me go to the other one and reload this as well. Okay, I'm gonna click on this office. Hey, Sean, real quick. Yes. Um, I think when you did the 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 other instance or browser that you have when you opened up demo CMS, you didn't reload it after you added the whole closed window, release the lock. Oh, so I probably have a so lock. I think you have a lock up. Yeah. Ah, good thinking. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. So basically, I didn't pick up the new code. <laughs> on my other session. So I would have had that lock still there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna open up Office Depot and I'm gonna go to my other session and try Office Depot. And now you see we're getting a little more information. Before it was just customers locked. So now I'm getting customers locked by user link tree and program DD27. So we're calling unlock customer or lock customer B. 
So if I go to the top, you know, we've got all these different. So I, I was calling this one. So let's look at lock customer B. So it's really similar to um, the lock customer, except the only difference is now I'm passing that lock user. I, I'm passing that fifth parameter. I'm saying, so I'm calling VV utility lock and saying, okay, well, by the way, if you for some reason cannot lock the record, then populate this for me. Tell me who has the lock. So that gives me the user ID. So if it can't lock the record, then I'm just extracting the uh, the name of the user from the VB users file, you know, because I got an ID, it returns me an ID and I'm just saying, all right, who, what's the name of this ID? You know, what, what, what login name is behind that user ID? And then I'm just sending back a message that's a little, you know, has a bit more details. Login name in program, and it also passes me back the name of the program that has it locked. Okay. So that's that's lock customer B. <laughs> um, let me see what. Okay, so now let's 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 change it a little bit more. So let me just close this. So suppose when they um, click on a customer, I don't want to just tell them. I don't want to give this message that's saying, you know, hey, you cannot look at this record. You can't access the record. It's locked. I'm going to allow them to still view the record, but I'm going to make sure that they can't save, right? We're going to prevent the save from taking place. So let's go back into App Builder. And I'm going to create a new app variable called disable save. Okay. So let's go back and let's go into behaviors and let's locate that save button. And I'm just going to click on it. And this save button is going to be controlled by that app variable. I want it to be disabled when disable save is true. Okay. So let's save that and let's change our lock now to be lock customer C. And let's save and I'll save. And Sean, real quick, there's yep. a question about your LPGN name. I assume that's just a hard coded variable. It has nothing to do with VB utility lock, right? The variable is changed by. Yes, that's true. The, the variable LPGM name in that case is changed by VB utility lock. Changed by that. Okay. Yep, it is. Okay, so let me uh, let me reload this. I don't think I need to reload this, but I'll do it just to be safe. Okay, so let's go back to Office Depot. Okay, so you know I can save now. If I try Office Depot here, I'm expecting that window to still pop up. So customer is locked, save not allowed, but you know, I have this the save button is disabled. Okay. So if we take it a step further, you know, it, it sure I can't save, but I'm still allowed to type in here. Maybe that we can improve on that. So let me close this, close this. And let's go back to app builder. And I'm going to go to my form. And I'm going to click link to app variables. Disable field. Yep, I want to disable all of these fields when disable save is true. I don't need to create a new app variable for it. I could just reuse the same one because it kind of they all you know do the same purpose in this case. So let me save that. And let's save again. So let me get my record up and we'll go to the other session here. Click this again. Okay, so now we have them all disabled. Okay. And 
I saw I had a lock customer D in there. And to be honest, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I want it. I don't know why I had that in there. I want to see what that's doing. Oh yeah, this is, we're going to disregard this. This is, there's a better, uh, what I just did basically was I was, I was disabling the fields, but I was doing it from the back end here, which didn't prove out, it didn't work out well. So we saw, you know, basically we saw two different ways, right? You know, I'm just stopping the user or we're allowing the user to continue, but we're just, you know, removing the, um, the ability to save. And then let me, let me show one last problem actually, because we do have a problem still. Um, let me go back. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna close this. And let me just go to our demo or a file. Um, so wait, let's see here. I've got my, okay. So I've got my record open, right? I know if I close this, the lock will be removed. And I know if I click save, the lock will be removed. But what if I do this? What if I just close the application? So I just close the application. And if I go here, I still have that lock. So that's not good. So let me just remove it manually. And let's go back to App Builder and let's take care of that. So I'm gonna go into behaviors and I'm gonna slide out the startup close. And then here's a, an example where you'd wanna close program. So um, upon close, I wanna call DD27 underscore close. I created this program already based off of you know, this template. I'll save that, save. And let's just test it, then I'll show you the code. Let me just make sure it works. So we'll bring up Office Depot again. I'm going to go to File Editor, make sure I have the, the, the record. Yep. And now I'm just going to close the application. So hopefully that lock is gone. And it is. And if we see what we're doing, this closed program, we're just calling BV Utility Unlock. Same thing, accessing our app variable pulling our SID. Okay. So simple example of, 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 you know, record locking. Uh, let's see, Theory had a question. Does VB utility lock take into account record lock from sessions that are no longer active from users that shut down without? Uh, that's a good question, Theory. Um, right, Rob, Rob actually jumped in a bit. Um, uh, on the side with me and, and he jumped in stating that yeah when you're when you're the session's being closed right they will it will remove those locks but if there's like, like Rob said there's like a right but if there's like a power loss or something like that um those locks could possibly still be out there so he said you probably want to create a routine that clears those ZV locks for such a situation Okay. Yeah. So, uh, any yeah, any any other questions? To view the locking. Oh, okay. So uh, Laura had a question here. Um, yeah. So so Laura, I'm just I'm just using file editor. So um, file editor has a. I'm just opening the VB locks file. We don't have a. We don't have a dedicated application to um, to viewing this, although you know using App Builder would be super easy to do, um, because we've we've really you know we use this internally for ourselves, and you know you you obviously you're more than welcome to to use the file, but you know you might have record locking you know your own type of files that you use your own database for record locking that you can use. Um, but you know the process, the flow of it all would be the same. We're just I'm just using this VB locks file out of simplicity because it's built into valence already. Any other questions? All right, well, Johnny, that's all I got. All right.
Well, thanks, and thanks everybody for joining. And then we'll have this up on our YouTube channel after we get the recording and push it up there. All right, thanks again. Everybody have a good rest of your day.